Hi and welcome back. So I, like you, I'm very sure, watch the likes of Andrew Huberman, Rhonda Patrick, David Sinclair, Peter Atiyah, etc. Who will all produce excellent content on longevity, lifestyle, anti-aging interventions, etc. And probably like you, I leave comments and I also read the other viewers' comments too. Now I get that these are very busy people and there are probably a multitude of reasons why they don't or they can't answer questions that their viewers pose in the comments section. I've noticed that there appear to be the same kind of questions regularly being asked on those specific channels and also on mine as well. So in this video I'm going to address those more oft asked questions that address the subject of taking control of your health and wellness and getting started on your personal longevity journey. This is going to take the form of five tips set out in a linear sequence. The first tip is to set a baseline. Peter Atiyah is always talking about this. He talks about the final decade of your life, that's where you want to be, but he also says you need to know where you're starting from. Now there are a multitude of markers that you can record as your baseline. For most people, including myself, the main issue here is going to be cost. There are a number of physical assessments that you can conduct completely for free. These include the six minute walk test, the 30 second sit to stand test, the one minute leg stand test and the one minute press up test. Now you can add, of course, as many tests as you like, such as maximum pull ups in one minute or maximum air squats in one minute, etc. The second tip is to record everything. And I do mean absolutely everything. Ideally, set up a spreadsheet. Now, if you don't have a computer, then recording it in a book is going to be better than nothing. If you follow my channel, you know that my data is recorded under two main headings, objective stats and subjective stats. Objective stats cover things like my blood tests, also the biometric scores that I get from my biometric scale, like body fat percentage, muscle mass, weight, etc. I also get my sleep scores and my step count from my fitness tracker, and my smart ring. Also my grip strength, and I get that from my dynamometer. Then there are my subjective stats, which cover areas such as overall well-being, motivation, my gym performance, my injury, and the recovery thereof, and also sickness and how quickly I recover from that. Also my reaction to adding new supplements to my stack, and these can be both positive and negative. For example, after adding X to my stack, if I felt a noticeable increase in energy, then this would be recorded. Or after adding Y to my stack, I felt nauseous and sick for maybe three or four hours after taking it. And if nothing happens at all, this is still recordable data. For example, having now taken hyaluronic acid for three years, I have seen or felt no changes physically whatsoever. If you ask me now at my five and a half year point, what date did I add hyaluronic acid to my stack? I'd have no idea at all, but a quick check of my records and I will be able to give you the exact date. Also, if I hadn't recorded it, I would not know that in five years I've lost 16.82 pounds. That's around 7.6 kilos. And I've also lost five inches off my waist since April 2019. Tip number four is to always try to start with nutrition. If you have a bad diet and you don't exercise, it's a lot harder to change your diet than to start exercising. So focus on eating as cleanly as possible. This means a whole food diet. This can be carnivore at one end or vegan at the other or anything in between. I really don't care. You just have to stop eating ultra processed foods. They are full of added sugar and when consumed, light up the same reward center in the brain as people who take cocaine. So if you're addicted, it's going to take you a lot longer to change that than having to say get up and walk around the block as the first step in changing your exercise protocol. This may seem like a strange request, but if you're enjoying the video and you'd like to do me a solid, there's no need to give me a thumbs up and there's no need to subscribe. If you want to help, please share it. Anywhere is fine. Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, X, even Rumble. Anywhere is fine. Back to the video. And back to diet. Changing your diet as in eliminating ultra processed foods is going to be extremely difficult, especially if your family is not 100% on board with what you want to do. The next tip is to change just one thing at a time. This goes for changing your diet before changing your exercise regime, as well as trying to get better sleep at the same time as trying to add supplements into your lifestyle. If you do two or three things at the same time and you see or feel a marked improvement in one facet of your life, it's going to be very difficult to pinpoint what actually changed that 
and what caused the improvement or indeed the downturn. So make a change, record what that change is, and then take a few weeks to assess its effect all the time, recording changes, positive, negative, or no change at all. The final tip is to stay away from supplements for as long as possible. I talked earlier about the cost maybe being a factor for some people. Ideally, you should have a blood test to ascertain what you may be deficient in, for example, vitamin D. You can't guess what your vitamin D level is. And if money is an issue and your vitamin D level, unbeknownst to you, is in the sufficient range, but you've already started to supplement, you may well be wasting your money. Now, I split supplements into two separate categories. They are measurable and unmeasurable. Measurable are things that you can objectively measure, such as your testosterone levels, your NAD levels, your omega-3 levels, and your vitamin B12 levels, and there are many more. And if you are deficient, you can supplement or take a drug or change your diet, and then a few months later, retake the test to see what has happened. Unmeasurable supplements are supplements that have some evidence supporting their use, but maybe not a lot of data from human studies. Here we're talking about things such as hyaluronic acid, resveratrol, spermidine, cert sex, taurine, etc. So this is a judgment call for you. It's up to you to look at the studies and then to do your own research. Then you can decide whether or not you want to start a specific supplement. Another kind of tip, I suppose, is that when you're doing your research, make sure you gather data from as many sources as possible. Now, I've noticed, and this is purely anecdotal, that younger people with time on their hands and a metabolism that isn't showing signs of wear and tear tend to be overly cautious. And unless there has been numerous double-blind, placebo-controlled clinical trials, the risk of taking something like fisetin is far too hazardous for them. As a rule, I am generally a very risk-averse person. But having weighed up the pros and cons and the potential risks and using a data-driven approach, I do take a number of supplements that fall into my unmeasurable category. If I were 30 or maybe 35 and I had more time on my hands, I may well not have taken this particular route. And remember, when it comes to longevity, what Andrew Huberman said. Just to take a step back, I know a lot of people out there, are like if there isn't a double-blind, placebo-controlled trial, you know, random, random trial, then why would you ever take something? And then there are a lot of people like David or me or a lot of people out there who think, well, if there are some mouse data or something safe, why wouldn't I try? Right? Because when it comes to longevity, nobody wants to be in the control group. Trust me when I say no one is coming to save you, least of all the government, ultra processed food companies or big pharma. Having a logical science backed plan that ignores junk food marketing and advice from medical professionals who only get paid when you're sick is all up to you. Let me know in the comments below, what are you doing to save yourself? Have you started your own longevity experiment?